Well, good morning, good morning. This is Coffee with Carol. And today I wanna to talk about who we depend on and what we depend on. Last night, I forgot to plug my phone in for charging. And so when I got up this morning, the battery was pretty low and I needed to charge it. But I realized how much I depend on that phone for my morning routine. I use that phone to go to my Bible app. I use the phone to, um, to look up scriptures, to, to really dig into God's word. That is what I use to create my morning messages and really, uh, you know, have that flow in the morning, right? And it started me thinking about what other things do I just automatically depend on without even thinking about it? I depend on the car to start to get me someplace. You know, I depend on my clock to work so that I know what time it is. I depend on, you know, so many things. I depend on that coffee maker to make my coffee in the morning. That really is something I depend on, right? We depend on so many things in the world, and that is our natural instinct. Um, the Oxford definition of dependence is the state of relying or being controlled by something or someone. Webster says it's a reliance or a trust in something or someone. Um, you know, we depend on the money that we make. We depend on people to do things that they say they're gonna do. We depend on our vehicles. We depend on the AC working or the heat working, depending upon what time of year it is. We depend on the planes you know, actually getting us from point A to point B. We depend on medicine to take care of issues. We depend on ourselves. I know I depend on myself too. I, I depend on myself to, to get things done. If I asked you that question, you know, that we ask a lot of times in our leadership de development trainings and sales trainings, you know, who are the five people that you hang around the most? Because the five people that you hang around the most, you're going to become the most like. Who would those people be? Think for a minute. Who would you put down on your list? And I'm willing to bet you that not one of you, not one of us would put God down on that list because we don't see him as an individual person that can transform us and make us like him. We don't really see that. We don't really look at that. We look at actual human beings that we hang out with and that we spend time with. And so it makes sense that we depend on the internet company. We depend on the phone company. We depend on the computer. We depend on things and people instead of God. It's just natural. What if we stopped depending on all of that and we just depended on God? You probably would say that I'm a little bit crazy, that that makes really no sense because God doesn't maintain our cars and keep the oil changed. We do that. And God doesn't, you know, um, he's not responsible for plugging your cell phone in at night and making sure that the battery is charged. You are. Um, okay. Yeah, I get that. But. That's what makes it so easy for us to fall into a trap. George Mueller was someone who um, was in ministry and he ran a, an orphanage in England. And he said, the natural mind is ever prone to reason when we ought to believe, to be at work when we ought to be quiet and to go our own way when we ought to steadily walk in God's ways. However trying to nature, it is. It's not our natural instinct to go to God for everything, to be 100% dependent on him for everything. It doesn't make any sense to our human mind. I mean, how many times do you hear or have you possibly said, you know, um, there's really nothing left that we can do except pray. 
We turn to God as a last resort instead of a first option or the only option, right? After we've tried a bunch of other things. Proverbs 3, 4 through 7 in the Message Bible says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do and everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God. Run from evil. Your body will glow with health. Your very bones will vibrate with life. Honor God with everything you own. Give him your first and your best. Your barns will burst. Your wine vats will brim over. And don't, my friend, resent God's discipline. Don't sulk under his loving correction. It's the child he loves that God corrects. A father's delight is behind all of this. We need to depend on God like a little child depends on their parent. The little child depends on their parent for everything, for food, for clothing, to take care of them, to help them. And that's how we are to see God as, as, as the only source of everything, not just a resource that we use when we run into a, into a challenge, but the, the only thing that we use and the dependence. And I have to work on that too. We all have to work on this because it's not a natural thing to do. Charles Spurgeon said, self-sufficiency, relying on self is Satan's net where he catches men unsuspecting men, like foolish, poor, silly fish. And then he destroys them. Self-reliance or reliance on anything but God leads straight to frustration, destruction, and overwhelm. It's interesting to me how people will will not depend on God for so many things, but then he's the first one to blame when the world's answers come up void. I know guys from experience that when we go to God first in any situation, we may not fully ever, ever, ever understand why something is happening or why something is, is going the way it's going, but you don't ever end up blaming him when you do that. You end up feeling peace. You end up feeling comforted. You end up feeling like it's going to be okay. Because when you go to God and, and this is important, and you also seek his word for confirmation, for information, he gives you the peace that you need. He gives you the answers that you need. But it's our job to simply depend on him to do it. God does the how and you do the do, and that's the way it goes. Make it a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.